Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to a brand new mini series on my channel on advanced prototyping using Figma variables. I'm going to simplify Figma variables and advanced prototyping as much as I can because let me tell you, it is one hell of a feature. It is extremely complicated and I myself had to struggle quite a bit with uh, not enough resources online. Uh, I tried to watch pretty much every video I could on Figma variables and it was not enough. So uh, it's actually pretty hard and I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. I had to figure out why something worked and why something didn't work. And uh, it is actually pretty complicated. So the whole purpose of this a course is to simplify all of that, teach you in a very realistic and practical approach. Okay, so let's get started. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I released a video on Figma variables and how to create design tokens and set up a design system. And I found this very fun and interesting comment. Uh, as you can see over here, it's pretty self-explanatory. And I hope I can do the same thing with uh, advanced prototyping as well. Uh, teach it better than anybody else on YouTube that has uploaded any video so far today. And uh, hopefully make it a lot simpler to understand and learn. Okay, so now when we look at prototyping, let's understand where Figma stands today and what you can do. If you take any prototype, I would probably put it under three different spectrums, which is low fidelity prototypes, high fidelity prototypes, and then production level ready prototypes. Low fidelity prototypes is something that you can just whip up in within 10 to 15 minutes. You put a bunch of screens together, you just link them with basic tap animations and triggers, and then you know, you're done, right? Something that's just super raw, isn't very polished, doesn't cover edge cases, doesn't cover navigation issues and all of those things. High fidelity is what you can do with Figma today, but without variables and conditional logic. Smart animate, overlays, transitions, things like that, that's what you can do today. And then you've got production level ready, which is, I wouldn't really consider that to be a prototype because that is actually production level ready, uh, super functional, super logic built prototypes that you would expect to see on a mobile app that you would download from the App Store or the Play Store, right? But now with Figma variables and advanced prototyping, what we can do is we can create prototypes with fidelity that lies between high and production ready. Things are still not production ready. There's a lot of things that Figma variables can't do today and I'm sure Figma is working on it and they have to work on it or else there's no point of having this feature at all. And it's gonna take some time, maybe six months, eight months, another year for them to fix all of the things that we can't do today. And I'm gonna show you the prototype as well and explain what are the things that I can't do and what I was not able to do. But still, there are a lot of awesome, cool things that you can do today. And obviously I'm gonna show you the entire prototype where we did, but I was able to do so many interesting things and it would have been a nightmare without variables. So the entire course is structured into five videos and approximately they're one hour each. And the reason it's one hour each is because that is how complicated Figma variables is. It is ridiculous. And even the smallest interactions can take you half an hour to 40 minutes just to make it because there's a lot of things that you have to think about if it has to make complete sense. So with that being said, let me show you the prototype. So basically in this course, I'm gonna show you how to make the simple login flow. You enter your phone number, you get an OTP, and then you get into the home screen. Very simple and straightforward. It's one of the most popular flows or pretty much a flow that every app has. And there are so many interaction design details that we have to look at, so many edge cases, so many different types of flows that can arise out of this and how you actually have to do a really good job at understanding logic in order to build a proper prototype. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna spend some time, I'm gonna show you the prototype and explain a lot of, I'll start off with the happy path and then I'm gonna show you the edge cases and corner cases and back navigation and a lot of things. Okay, so we're on the screen and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the country. So this is Germany, I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna get a bunch of countries, I'm gonna choose India. And when I choose India, what you can see over here is that the country code got adapted over here. And if I choose Germany again, you can see it switches to Germany. And if I choose to India, it switches to India, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and type in a phone number. So uh, let's say I'm gonna type in 965965965965 and 96. And as you can see, the moment we hit 10 characters, the button gets activated. And the interesting thing here is that I can continue tapping on things. Now, why do we have this counter? We will need that when we're building this prototype, but for now, just assume that these are the number of taps. So as you can see, I'm tapping, but it's limiting it to 10 characters, which is correct, okay? So now at this stage, let me go ahead and tap on this to send code. And we're gonna land on this screen. And what you can see is first of all, there is a countdown, right? Now this countdown is not something that I did manually. I can set this countdown to start from any number and it's going to work and I don't have to make a really complex prototype. All I have to do is just set a logic. 
So I can click over here and that's going to resend me the code and then you can see that the countdown starts all over again. So that's the first thing. The second thing here is I can tap on this, which is basically, you know, the suggestion that I get. I tap on it, it fills it, the button gets active, I can tap on verify code and then there's a quick success animation and then we transition to the home screen, right? That's the happy path. Um, I can also do it in a different way. So if I restart the prototype, I'm gonna choose India, I'm gonna go ahead and just select a random number and I'll click on send code. Um, and uh, I can also type in this number. So I can say 314405, and then I can say verify code, and then it's going to work, okay? So let me go back again to that screen. I'm gonna choose India. Again here, tap in some random number, and then click on send code. Now, one of the interesting things here is that you can see that the number gets carry forward over here. Even the country code gets carry forwarded. So that's really cool. Now, what if, I enter a wrong number. So let's say I type one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Now the button is still active because I still have to click tap on it and then it's going to do the validation. But when I tap on verify code, you can see that we get an error message that says the code is incorrect, please try again. And the state of this is maintained, right? So if it was 10 seconds, it would show us 10 seconds and it would continue counting down, right? So I can quickly show you that. So I can tap on this, go to India, uh, I can type in a random number really quickly. And as you can see over here, it's still counting down. Oops, yeah, so it's still counting down. And uh, when I enter a wrong digit, you can see that the counter is still happening, right? But the error message is now visible. And how do I get rid of this error message? I can continue typing any digit and then it's going to reset all of that. And as you can see, the state maintains. All of these states, they maintain over here, right? So I can go ahead and type in any of this, right? And uh, let me show you another one. So I'm gonna start all over again enter a random number. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on send code. Um, and I can even enter over a few digits. So let's say I enter one, two, four, I tap on this, and then that changes everything to three, one, four, four, zero, five, which is the correct code. All right, let me reset again. Let me start again. I'm gonna show you something else. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in a random number again. And this time, what I will do is I'm going to enter a wrong OTP. I'm gonna tap on verify code. And this time when I tap on the correct one, it fills it and then the error message goes away, right? Now this seems like a very simple thing to do. It seems like putting together a bunch of screens, but this is extremely complicated and requires a lot of brain power and logic to understand how to make this work realistically. Now, a couple more things that I would like to show you. Now, when I chose India over here, okay, I was able to enter 10 digits, right? So I'm gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Okay, and as you can see, the button gets activated. When I tap on anything else, you can see I'm not able to enter another digit. But what if we change the country code? Okay, so I'm gonna restart again. This time, I'm gonna start off with Germany. And Germany has 11 digits. So if I type in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, it doesn't activate because Germany needs 11 digits. So I'm gonna tap on one, and then it's going to activate it. So depending on the country code, I'm actually defining what is the maximum character limit. And that is beautiful logic, right? We can't do that natively today unless we make hundreds of screens in Figma, right? With variables, we can do this really quickly and with beautiful logic. Now, a couple of things with regard to interaction design. So I'm gonna start off all over again. Now, when I tap on this, um, I haven't entered anything. But if I tap outside, you can see that the keyboard goes away and everything becomes normal. Now, this seems like a simple animation, right? but it can get a lot more complex. When I click on this and let's say I enter four digits, I tap outside, you can see the keyboard goes away, but that value gets maintained over there and it can be anything. So I can tap on it again to trigger it, enter a few more digits, tap outside, tap again, enter a few more digits, tap outside and start all over again until I hit 11, right? And I can still tap on this outside and you can see the button state gets maintained and then I can click on this and I can proceed to the next screen. Now, a couple of interesting things here as well. Now, on this particular screen, I've entered the OTP screen. But what if I had made a mistake in entering the phone number? Let's say I entered the wrong phone number. So I want to go back and enter a brand new phone number. So when I go back, it resets the entire thing. Now, of course, you saw that slight delay and that's just a Figma bug. But as you can see, it's resetting the entire thing with the keyboard open and I can enter a brand new phone number. I can even, let's say, type in something weird like this and I can tap on send code and uh, that gets populated over here and I can start typing all over again. So let's say I enter 5242, something like that. Now, in the middle, I realized that my number was wrong. So now I have to go back and I have to start all over again. So let me type in a different phone number, something a little bit different. 
and I tap on this, you can see everything has been reset. Now this looks pretty obvious, but when you actually sit down and make the prototype, you realize you have to think about every single component, every single state, every single logic that you put behind. And now I can continue tapping um, and uh, I can tap on verify code. It's gonna tell me it's the wrong code. I can tap on this, tap on verify code. It uh, changes to green color and then we enter the home screen. Right. So this simple flow is going to take me five videos to explain how it works. And I'm going to do it in the most simplistic and interesting way possible so that everyone can start making use of Figma variables. All right. So coming back to the presentation. So like I said, it's five videos and one hour each. We're going to use the power of English to make life simple for us. And this is not a joke. We are actually going to behave like we are talking to Figma and telling Figma what to do just the way you would tell another human being, right? We would use English, proper English, nothing too technical, nothing too complicated, complete logic to make this work. And I'm going to show you a logical step-by-step -step approach. I'm not going to make all the variables first. I'm not going to do all the transition first. I'm going to go from step by step. We're going to keep tweaking our animation. We're going to keep tweaking our interaction. We're going to fix a lot of things. We're going to find out mistakes. We're going to fix those mistakes. And then we're going to get what we want. It's not going to be something that's going to be very linear. I'm going to show it to you in a way where we build upon our mistakes. We build upon the steps that we do in order to achieve the right results. And that will help us understand why something works and why something isn't working. Now, what are the things that I'm going to be covering? I'm going to be covering four main things. Of course, Figma variables. We have something called a string, number, and Boolean. The next thing is components. How do you use components? When do you make components? How do you switch between various states? We're going to look at all of that. Now, what I, one of the things that I want to mention here is that this has nothing to do with a design system. You want to detach this components from your design system and make things that are just needed for the prototype. Your design system is going to stay as it is. You're going to create separate, small, tiny components just for the prototypes. We're going to understand if and else conditionals, one of the most important things. An example of this is the country speaker that we saw. If the country was India, we would set 10 digits. If it was Germany, we would set 11 digits, right? So we're going to understand when to use if and else conditionals because it can get really complicated and we're going to use the power of English to make it simple for us. And finally, we're also going to be combining this with the native prototyping features. We have to combine it with the native prototyping features to do certain interactions. Not everything can be done on one screen and it is really impossible because Figma hasn't released a lot of features yet and a lot of functionalities to it yet. So we are going to have to in may sometimes have screens, but I'm going to reduce the number of unnecessary screens and try to make the interactions as much as we can on one single screen. Right. So the whole course is divided into five parts. The first one, I'm going to show you the country picker. The second one is the phone number input. The third is transitioning to the OTP screen. This whole thing itself is one hour video because just transitioning to the OTP screen, there are so many things that you have to think about. Even back navigation, resetting the states, carrying forward information. For example, when we enter the phone number, the phone number value was carry forwarded to the OTP screen. We're going to look at all of those things and it is really complicated. And the most complex video is going to be the OTP input. It looks really simple, but let me tell you, it is insanely hard. And I had to struggle quite a bit to figure out how to make this work. But in the end, I was able to figure it out. I'm going to teach you everything on how to do it. So make sure to watch that. And finally, the countdown timer, probably one of the most interesting ones, which a lot of people are going to be interested in. Now coming to the F Figma, now coming to the Figma file, you don't have to pay anything. I'm making this completely free for everybody. So you can go to the description of every video and download the Figma community file. I'm going to be uploading one video per week on YouTube. You can watch the first video immediately after this video, but video number two, three, four, I'm going to release that slowly one week after the other so that it doesn't get too overwhelming. So with that being said, we can now get into Figma and start creating prototypes. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you're in the comment section is down below, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.